Today, I'm going to show you how to fake a shallow depth of field in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on the all new Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is super cool because it's going to help out just about everyone. Whether you guys are photographing with like a point and shoot camera or an iPhone or even if you have a digital SLR and you didn't use a shallow depth of field when you're photographing your subject, it's a really cool thing you can do in Photoshop to actually cut your subject out of the background and then knock the background out of focus. And we're going to do it in a way that looks super realistic. And what it's going to do is it's going to draw a lot more attention to your subject and help all the distracting elements from the background just kind of meld away into nothingness of a blur. <laughs> anyway, let's get into our episode. All right, so here's our image for today. And it's a beautiful image, but I think the background, there's so much detail in the background, especially like the colors are pretty similar to what's going on here in the foreground. Um, I, if we just kind of like knock that a little bit more out of focus, it'll really help draw attention to our subject. And she looks great. She deserves a little bit more attention. So in order to get that done, we need to make a good selection around our subject. Now, there are a lot of selection tools you can use. Um, down to like, I'm going to start off with something like the lasso tool. This isn't going to be a tool that I actually wind up using, but you should use the tool that you're comfortable with. Any tool, basically the idea is to just create a selection right around the edge of your subject. The more accurate, the better. And with the lasso tool, you can pretty much just draw on there. Now, the reason I don't love the lasso tool for something like this is it's not very accurate. It's kind of hard to control. You're just either using your <laughs> little pen tablet, you know, like a Wacom tablet like I'm using, or you're using a trackpad, or you're using a mouse. A lot of those are really not any good options there. You also have another, another option here for the magnetic lasso tool. Now, this will work a lot of the time. So if this works, go ahead and use the magnetic lasso tool. Basically, how you use this is just click anywhere on your subject and kind of move it right around your subject. And what this tool is going to do, um, it does a great job basically following an edge. So I'm not like, you know, I'm not trying to follow this edge. Like you can see, I can go inside here a little bit and the tool is going to do a great job. If you find yourself like if you do that like a mistake, just hit the backspace key a couple times. It'll delete these points and you can just kind of start over again. So this is a really great tool for following an edge and it's going to be a quick tool for those of you who don't want to spend the time or you just are not too comfortable using the pen tool. This would be my next best suggestion. All right, I'm going to hit escape. I am going to go ahead and use the pen tool because it really is the best way to make these selections happen. So we have great episodes on using the pen tool. You can click on the screen to get to those episodes. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and use the pen tool. We're going to fast forward a little bit while I do, and uh, then we're going to come back when we have our great selection. So we've just made a great pen path around our subject and I went ahead and made three different paths. We have one path that basically follows the entire outline of our subject and then she's got her arms uh, doing this in prayer position and uh, you can see there's a little bit of space in between each of the arms. So each of those gets its own separate path as well. Now I really like using the pen tool because it is the most accurate option whenever you're trying to cut something out of the background. It's by far going to give you the best selections possible. So now that we have our pen paths, let's go ahead and see how we're going to turn those into selections. Okay, so here are three pen path selections. We have our body. We can see that's right around our subject here. We have arm one, which is right over here. And then we have arm two, which is right over here. So to make the first into a selection, let's hold the control or command key. And we're just going to click right here on the thumbnail. That's going to turn our entire subject into a selection. Now, I'm going to hold down the, I'm still holding control or command, but now I'm going to hold alt or option as well, and I'm going to click on the arm one. And what this is going to do, you can see a little preview right there by my, um, by my hand there. There's the negative key. You can see like we have a blank, uh, a blank box there, and if I hold alt or option, there's a little negative key that shows up. All right, so let's go ahead and click that, and it's going to minus that area out of the selection. We'll just do the same thing here and that minuses that area out of the selection as well. Now, I'm not worried about cutting out the bottom of my subject because we're actually going to be using a blur that's going to affect mostly just the top. It's going to look a lot more realistic. We're going to basically flow from the bottom of the image to the top of the image. Okay, so now that we have our selection, let's go ahead and look at what that looks like on our layers. I'm going to 
just duplicate this entire layer. So the background layer, this is going to get a duplicate right there. So I don't really like working on my background layer. Now I want to see what my actual selection looks like. We can see the edge of our subject is a little bit fuzzy, right? But the edge of our selection right now is a super hard edge. So what I want to do is I want to refine that edge just a little bit. So we're going to go to select and then down here to refine edge. And you can see by default, the edge is really, really just a hard edge, right? So we're going to just start bring our feathering up, our feathering, <laughs> bring our feathering up just a little bit so it looks a little more natural. You can have a lot of different options. You can see what it looks like on white. You can see what it looks like in black and white. Let's go on white and see what, how that looks. We can see we're including a little bit of our background as well. So if we wanted to shift our edge in just a little bit, that would help with that as well. All right. All in all, we've got a great selection around our subject. So let's go ahead and hit OK now that we have that selection active. So now that we've made our great selection, we've got our subject cut out from the background and we need to apply a blur to the background. We're going to use a special blur here that's going to help make the background look like it's out of focus. Now, taking a look at our image right now, if I were to just apply a blur to what we have, let's just do a Gaussian blur real quick. Um, bring this up. You can see this is actually blurring the inside of our selection. This is blurring our subject. So I want to make sure I inverse the selection. So we're going to go to select and then down here to inverse and now we're selecting everything else. So now that we have an inverse selection, we're ready for our blur. So we're going to go to filter. I'm going to go down to blur gallery and we're going to go to tilt shift. Now the reason I'm using tilt shift here is because it allows me to use basically a gradient of a blur. I can choose one area to get no blur and have it gradually blur more and more and more. So I'm going to use that basically as the point where our subject is sitting. I don't want to add extra blur there, but the background is going to get extra blur. So here we are in our tilt shift dialog. Now we have a lot of different options here. Basically this is the center of our blur. So I'm just going to click this and we're going to start cranking this to the right so we can actually see what, what this looks like. So this is the center of our blur. This is kind of our midpoint and this is the end point here. So if I were to bring this point up, you can see it starts to feather out more between this area and this area. If I bring my midpoint up, it basically just changes where my blur is going to start and stop. So I'm actually going to bring my midpoint right to about the center of my of my actual blur. And then we can choose, you know, like obviously like this is a very this would be a very abrupt change, right? This would be a lot more of a of a gradual change. Now the center of my blur I actually want to bring down to the center of my subject. So we're going to click here and we're going to bring there we go. We're going to click on this point. Let's just bring that up just a little bit so I can actually click on what I need to. There we go. And we're going to bring this right down here because we don't need like the area right behind her, right? That doesn't need to get an extreme blur. It wouldn't look realistic if it did get an extreme blur because it's supposed to be right behind her, right? So now we have basically our options of how much we want to blur our background and we can drag any of these there we go, to basically decide how much background blur we're going to get. And, you know, in this case, we might decide, you know, once it hits the tree line, I want that to be 100% blur. So that, that would be, you know, something like this. Like, it's hitting the tree line, and then everything from the tree line back is going to get the blur. So this is the big thing. You want to make sure you place your center of your blur right where your subject basically touches the ground, and that these points are going to determine how far this blur is actually going to go. And then, you know, this is not going to look very realistic because the tops of the trees are now getting more blurred than the bottom of the trees. That doesn't make any sense, right? Because blur happens with depth, not with height. So we want to make sure that this line basically matches depth. There we go. And now all that we have to do is basically just our blur and our distortion to make this look a little more realistic. Right now we've got our blur really, really cranked up. Um, so let's go ahead and drag that down just a little bit so we get something that's a little bit more realistic. Now we also have a couple options here with our um, blur effects. You can include things like light bokeh, which going too high just is going to look absolutely horrible. Um, you can add some color into the bokeh as well if you'd like to. And you can even change your light range. So we could say like, you know, more, obviously this is going to include more. And coming up here, this is going to include less. All right, let's see how this looks kind of bringing this down a little bit more. Like a little bit of light bokeh might look good, but you know, generally you don't want to do, you don't want to go crazy with it because that's just, um, unless you're trying to create like a Christmas type image, but you know, for, for reality's sake, that's really never going to look good, cranked up that high. Okay, 
So this looks pretty good, actually. We're, we've got our subject. We, she's cut out from the background. You can mess around with other things like your distortion if you'd like to. That's not going to make huge changes there. Um, and then you have other things like field blur, iris blur, path blur, and spin blur. These are for completely different uses. So make sure you stay here within the tilt shift. My recommendation would be to create a couple of these different blurs. So like, you know, bring your blur down just a little bit. If you bring the blur down to zero, this is what it looks like, you know, by default. So try a little bit of blur, and if that looks good, try a little bit more. But I think you'll find that if you bring your blur too high, you're going to get something that really doesn't look realistic at all. So my recommendation would be just start off with something you think is acceptable and start pushing that up and up and up a little bit more. All right, let's go with that, and we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And that's all there is to it, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at our before and our after. Here's our before image and our after. Now for this episode, I kept it relatively toned down. I didn't crank the blur all the way up. That's going to help it look more realistic, but you can control that blur however you want. Just remember the key steps are make a great selection around your subject. You can use the lasso tool, magnetic lasso tool, or my personal favorite is the pen tool. Then you want to go to the refine edge dialog and make sure that the blur around the edges actually matches the blur of the photo. Then after that, just go to filter, down to blur gallery, and then down to tilt shift. And from there, you can choose the exact settings you need to add that perfect fake depth of field in Photoshop. Thanks so much for watching Florin, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have an idea about a future episode or a question about today's episode, just leave it in a comment right down below. We'd love to help out. And if you like what we're doing here at Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can receive free Photoshop and photography tutorials every single week. Did I mention they're free? Because they are. Anyway, thanks so much guys and we'll flirt you later. Bye everyone.